Britain is a nation of pet lovers. There are over 6 million pet dogs and 7.5 million pet cats. But for some people, that's not enough. In homes across the UK, they live around 3,000 pet monkeys. You're a chicken. I know you're a chicken. Have you got kisses? Nice kisses, please. Ah, here come the goodies. Hello. Out by the car if you could, please. Monkey Mad Jean fills a car with fruit and veg three times a week to feed her house guests. Luckily, the local supermarket lets them have their out-of-date produce. No, you want them. Oh, look at this strawberries for tea and peaches. That'd be nice for them, won't it? Jean's taken owning pets to the extreme. Along with Lodger Joe, she's turned a three-bedroom semi-detached house in Yorkshire into a small zoo. The current head count stands at 77, but it's the monkeys that have really taken over. She's got 22 of them, and they all need feeding. We normally start about 7 o'clock, have a cup of coffee, and then we start cutting up, really, which is what we're doing now. Dishes go out. Food gets chopped up in various sizes for various little hands to hold. Then we go around all the enclosures, clean them out and put the food down. That, believe it or not, takes about three and a half hours. Jean's passion for monkeys started from an early age. Do you like to tell us the story of, of how you got your first monkey? That was a cottony and marmoset. I'd seen one when I was seven at the seaside, which fired me off. And um, mother said, oh no, no way, not, not having a monkey living with me at home. So I was convinced that I couldn't have one. Waited 32 years. And then we went to a, a zoo. On the back of the door was a notice in the um, snake house that said, Mom set monkey for sale, I thought. Now's the time. Did you have children at home at the time? When the no, no. No, I have a family, I have a daughter, I have a lovely daughter, but she was to a previous marriage and she was grown up and living away from home by then. With no children left at home, Jean's monkeys quickly increased. It wasn't long before the primates took over. Now there isn't a room in the house without a monkey in it. We've got 11 monkey enclosures in the garden, one with a skyway leading to bedroom one, which has two monkeys in it. Then you've got two monkeys in bedroom two, two monkeys in the lounge, three monkeys in the dining room. Then of course is Reuben, who lives above the cooker in the kitchen. Ah, Reuben's up. Oh, and he's got a headache. He was sitting holding his head. At least we know it's not a hangover because you don't drink. Bum. Lodger Joe arrived at Jean's house ten years ago to do some painting and decorating, but found himself working as a full-time zookeeper instead. He never left. I've always liked animals, but I've never been in a position to keep. I have only too many friends what went to school with me. And they're dead and gone now. They've retired, and then they haven't kept active. You've got to have something to occupy your mind to keep you alert, to be doing something and all like exercise. I mean, I don't go exercise and I get enough here. Times when you feel it is if you're not feeling too good yourself, then you wish you could just go back to bed and have that few extra hours sleep. Other than that, if I'm feeling fine, I don't mind doing it all day long. Joe's my rock. I couldn't cope without him. He's built all of this. I mean, I can't put a nail in. If it wasn't for his help with the animals, um, I couldn't cope with having so many of them. Over in Manchester, in their three-bedroomed house, stay-at-home parents Dawn and Lee have raised a family of 12. Four of them are the kids Jonathan, Melissa, Olivia and Gracie May, and then you've got eight marmoset monkeys. One of Dawn's earliest memories is of a mum's pet monkey. I was about one, and my mum swapped a monkey for a fur coat. <laughs> and that was my first monkey. Then she got rid of that one, because she had my sister, and it didn't like my sister. 
When she got together with Lee, a fellow monkey lover, they were able to fulfil Dawn's dream of owning her own monkey. When you're a kid though, you think, oh, I won't mind a monkey, I won't mind a snake, and I won't mind this, and I won't mind that. And he's like, them things go, and then he's like, you got a chance of getting them, you just jump at them, don't you? Just give me that bit where he's bit. <coughs> no, he's bit that bit. He you get that one? I've always liked pets and everything, but it's only now I've gone mad. I only wanted one, and then I wanted a mate for her, and then we ended up getting a full troop. <laughs> you get peppers to get you. Having kept monkeys for like nearly two years, their life has been completely taken over. They have a Sunday dinner, oh, but they love chicken, prawns, oh, they go mad for prawns and fish, don't they? Yeah. Garlic bread, we're having bolognese. Pepper's there and he's eating off your plate. He loves pasta. From the dinner table to the TV, the monkeys are calling the shots. Oh, they love curry. And they love celebrity to get me out of here. Well, that's the noise of the crickets. And they will not go to bed. One minute. Come on. Yeah, Lee, grab that one. Yeah. See, I can control monkeys. I can't control, control kids. <laughs> The monkey business is a full-time one. From waking to going to bed, Jean and Joe are hard at work. You want Barkley? Eh? You all right this morning? What? Jean takes in the waifs and strays of the monkey world. Over half her animals are rescue cases. Like this marmoset here, it's called Stitches. Stitches has got wasting disease, which marmosets sometimes get. She's not that old, old. She's about eight, nine. Come on, darling. A good girl. You want a little lift? Where would you like to go to? Oh, yes, I know all about it. Let's have a little groom, you and I. You did well to make it up this morning again. I think one morning you won't get out of bed, will you, darling? And then we'll have to take you. You're so thin. Hmm? Jean spent a working life delivering babies. The cost of her ever-growing monkey collection means she still has to work two days a week training midwives. I must have delivered well over a thousand now. That's human ones. Uh, I've delivered a few monkey ones as well. Like babies of any kind. But all things have to stop sometime and then I started with monkeys which has always been a hobby all my life and interest anyway, so one thing replaced the other. Oh no, why, what are they? Oh, they're minis. Oh, bother. They are little. Well, they'll have to eat them, won't they? Can't do anything about it. But I'll have a word for next week. 77 animals takes a lot of looking after. Today, Jean and Joe are being helped by Julie. She's a trainee veterinary nurse from the local college. Well, even if it's just... Hey? She says, I'm not coming this morning. There's lots of people. Come on, darling. Come on. It's your breakfast. Julie's here today. Come on. Julie's only been with them for a few weeks, but she's quickly learning what's involved with looking after so many animals. The animals come first. I mean, the house is you know, totally geared up round the animals rather than round Joe and Jean. Some people would say it's eccentric, but, you know, who are they to say? But I was a little bit shocked. What would you like for lunch, Joe? Scrambled egg on toast, all right? No, I'm going to have a meat pie. Right. Yeah. Balanced day at that one in each hand. Now then, all right, Joe? Yeah. Good. This house is as much for the animals as it is for us. If you're an animal lover, you'll understand. If not, what the hell are you doing here? And that, to me, sums it all up. If you're not an animal lover, this isn't the place to be. The Monkey Sanctuary Trust in Cornwall has spent years taking in pet monkeys that have become too much to handle. You know, what's more appealing than a sweet little primate face, it's cuddly, it's desperate for nurture and attention and 
people fall for it. They will buy that sweet little thing. Other people keep monkeys uh, as a status symbol. Um, it gives them kudos amongst their friends in the local community. Um, they'll invite people in. It's a way of getting social attention. So, I, mean, I think it's, you know, the novelty value is what people want. In Manchester, Dawn and Leah are opening the doors to local families. All together, but one at a time. Come on, kids. You're not scared. All the kids are there. Come on. I'm not scared. Oh, look at you. How long have you been there? Two years. Gorgeous, aren't they? Do you still just put them in? Like, no, in? Yeah, no. They're ugly these A lot of these kids won't see monkeys. They don't go to zoos and things like that. And they love it, the monkeys love it. In small doses they do. Because that's why they're all showing off. Until it gets too loud and then they'll all go outside. They escape. Like me. I can't remember what it's like that one, no. Everybody loves these. Keeps me, my life full. <laughs> Got to speak to more people, I suppose. They have plenty of visitors. No, you can't be lonely if you've got monkeys. Monkeys on crickets and fruit. This is um, Nocturnal's final one at days, this one. It, we can relax then. What time would you and Jean normally get to, to bed at the end of the day? I normally go early. Jean normally goes around one o'clock because she plays with animals in there first. But I, I want me sleep, mate. <laughs> Jean, Charlotte, supper. We always put the monkeys first. You have to do. If we're feeling a little bit peckish, we can go to the fridge and open the fridge door and take something out and eat it. If they're feeling a little bit peckish and the dish is empty, where can they go? Oh yes, in the evenings, that's our relaxing time between tea time and supper time. Monkey tea time and supper time, that is. I usually sit here, get my feet up and let the squirrel monkeys down and that's their time to run up and down the staircase, come in the lounge, sit down, watch television with me. We usually have a few grapes and that's their special time when I can enjoy them and work is finished for the day. Joe has his own room and I sleep here. I make this into a bed and I sleep here. Seems strange I know to a lot of people but that's the way I think. Look, look at him. <laughs> He's got me cuckoo. <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh, because if the kids stood it, I'd kill him. <laughs> Are you up? Oh, where's yours? I'm going to wipe it off now. It's tea time, and the family are eating together. I love McDonald's chips. Look at him. He's dropped a locust for that. I think it's a good bonding experience to, to eat with the monkeys and stuff, so you're yeah. like big family life. Yeah. Uh, Some people see it a total different way. You it's think like unhygienic. It's unhygienic and no. all this carry on. See, it's a pet, like a dog, it'll lick your face. It's just like a monkey, it'll just come on and it'll just take some out and go. Say yeah, Pepper. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Give him a chip. Give him a chip. Uh. When there's an outbreak at school of ed lice, Melissa never has them because she just goes in the cage for an hour <laughs> and they just totally debug her. The children think the monkeys. I could move to the jungle freely. <laughs> in it. <laughs> yes. No, that's monkeys. Monkey obsessed Dawn and Lee have spent the last two years raising eight monkeys along with their four kids in the Manchester home. You can have an ice cream in ten minutes. It's a bit cold for ice cream. Today they're off to see how the professionals do it down at Chester Zoo. 
I think every kid wants a monkey. <laughs> and actually getting one when you're older, when you realise you've got it, it was just unbelievable and that's where it escalated from. Oh, no, Ali. Although Dawn loves her monkeys, she has reservations about keeping some primates in captivity. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> They're too big to be caged up with. We won't like our kids locked up in a cage, and that's what it looks like to them. I look in my monkey's eyes and they're just inquisitive and they look happy. These don't look happy. They might be happy, but they just don't look it to me. Babies are fine, look, they know no different, but the older ones, they must have come from somewhere. They've seen the other side. Look at his face up there. Let's go outside eating here. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I don't stick a telly in there. It gives him something to do. Because they'll be able to watch it. They'll they mess about with it at first and that, but then they'll get used to it. But slowly but surely they'll start watching it. Monkey Mad Jean has 77 animals in her house. Along with Lodger Joe. Hiya, darlings. Are you alright? I know what you were waiting for. Yes, a yum yum bug. One for you. Oh, yes, that's good. I'll just keep you going while your breakfast comes. By and large, generally speaking, they don't make good pets. They're a wild animal. You know, they, they've come from the jungle. They're unpredictable. If there's something they don't like, they'll bite. They've quite sharp teeth, they have tempers, and you can only train them so far. People just say, oh, aren't they cute? And I'd love to dress it up and take it out. You can't do that. Now then, darling, I know, I know you know what's coming. Mummy's brought you a little treat. Oh, it's your favourite. Yes, gobble it up. Oh, the goody good gumdrops. Stitches gets a locust every day because that's how I get her medicine into her and she doesn't even realise she's having it then. She adores locusts and it doesn't matter what you put on them, she still enjoys them. Just like children, aren't you? That's a stringy, stretchy one, Stitches, isn't it? I don't know what bit that is, but it's very stretchy. Somebody stopped me in the street yesterday, <coughs> having heard of me and said, Oh, do you keep orangutans? I've always wanted an orangutan. And I looked at him and I said, no, I don't. <laughs> and I don't think you would want one either, not in a backyard. <laughs> they have no idea. Uh, they've maybe been watching films or, you know, and just think, well, oh, it'd be such fun. Clint Eastwood film made them popular, well, that's Clyde. One. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. After searching the internet, Dawn's found out about Jean, her extensive collection and 25 years of monkey experience. Hiya, hiya. At last, I know. mate. How I'm are Dawn, you? I'm Dawn and that's Lee. Hiya. Hiya, nice hiya. Hello, baby. Yeah. Right. With no one to turn to when she has monkey problems, Dawn's keen to meet other keepers. Follow I'll follow you. <laughs> now then, I've just seen these. Golden handed tamarinds. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, like a kid in a sweet shop. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I like people who appreciate me. <laughs> this is where they play out, you see. That's their little inside. We got told never to put a conifer near him. With conifers in all the aviaries and nobody's mm. died yet for months. So. Look, look, look in the window. window. And they come down the chute here. And into See the, the monkey in the window. That's their big enclosure there. See, so it's not an eyesore. Like See, so it's like, if it was an eyesore, we'd get here, eh? To me, that's not an eyesore. Is it? No. Watch and learn. Are you watching? <laughs> She'll open your fingers one at once till she finds them. Come on. Oh, OK. <laughs> You've done it again. Well, she's got the lot. <laughs> she's real take the lot. She's not daft. She's a monkey. They're very clever, you know. Oh, that look is at that. We usually land the eye foot quick growing. Keep trimming it off at the top. And then when it thickens up again, yeah. keep trimming it off at the same level to thicken it up, form a canopy, and then in summer, they can rest on there and they can get benefit of sunshine. Yeah. 
Why don't you come when you can stay a bit longer? Oh, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. So come not back. All. Come I don't back. Go home. I'll choke. Come back. <laughs> come back. If you're a monkey lover, you're welcome. Oh. Here. Come when you can stay. People wouldn't want to live like that, but the way she set it up, it's her life and that's how she wants to live and everything's built around all them pets and she loves them she really 110% loves them she's got monkeys in every room I've got kids, I could have monkeys instead <laughs> If you try and mix humans and monkeys, you get a lot of confusion. Very typically, we get phone calls from people who say, well, our, you know, our baby mama's at was ever so sweet, and we bought it a companion, and they were fine, but now they're attacking the children. Fundamentally, primates are wild animals. Humans have associated closely with them for thousands of years, but we have never domesticated them. Um, they're not like cats and dogs. They've not been bred for a life you know, with humans. And even those that are brought up with people still exhibit instinctive in wild behaviours. <laughs> is a massive responsibility. Both Dawn and Lee, and Jean and Joe, know they have to look to the future. Well, this, this Avery is going to come out to it where the end of the table is there, and then put a tree in this one, and put a tree in that one. This Avery will be just for one lot of monkeys, and that other Avery will be for the family, the big family, and that. It'll be better. A lot of people said to me, and a lot of people advised me, how many years are you going to have to have them? And you can't just get rid of them, they bond with you. And it's not as if I go out, I don't leave my kids, I don't, I don't go out for a drink or nothing, I just stay in with them. So I know I've got these for good. These will be here longer than my kids. Don't answer your back either. <laughs> the only problem uh, I see is now what will happen if it suddenly happened to us? Because we're both knocking on now. One person can't cope here on their own. So if all happened to either of us, then it's going to be damn hard work. I see it as a gradual process where I don't replace them until we get down to keep it to a manageable amount, you know, for as long as we can possibly walk about and look after them. I have no idea. How other people see me, except they think I'm slightly crazy, I'm sure. I'm fulfilling a dream. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm enjoying every minute of it. No good when you're sitting in the nursing home thinking, oh, I wish I'd done so-and-so with my life. I always wanted a monkey, but never got one. Well, I won't have that regret. I'll have done it. <laughs> Dum, 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 dum,